Hi teams, I'm Erin Fadden, member of the First Tech Challenge Game Design Committee. I hope you're excited about this year's Power Play game presented by Raytheon Technologies. I want to give a huge shout out to the Game Design Committee for all the hard work they put in year round to design each game. Big thank you to Michael Coleman, Mark Edelman, Manny Lowe, Joe Parado, Jessica Bolin Smith, and Kevin Rudd. Let's take a quick walkthrough of the actual field, plus, talk about some of the exciting components of this year's game. First, let's talk about the junctions. As mentioned in the animation, there are four different types of junctions, the ground, low, medium, and high. The low, medium, and high junctions have different ranges of movement based on the height. The range of motion decreases as cones are added to these junctions. Next up, we have the cones. Here's what they look like on the field during pre-match setup. To be considered scored, a cone must be secured to a junction. Secured means that either the 4-inch diameter base of the cone is completely in the recess of the floor junction, or when the pole of the low, medium, or high junction passes through the 1.25-inch diameter of the cone with a large opening facing toward the playing field floor. A cone is secured when it is scored onto another secured cone. Cones can be in any orientation to score in a terminal. Descoring, whether intentional or not, may have a severe impact on an alliance's ability to complete a circuit. Therefore, accuracy in driving is an important component in this game. There are rules outlined in the game manual that cover penalties for descoring. Teams should be especially careful of descoring cones from the ground junctions. Returning this year is a team scoring element called the beacon, which is used to cap a junction in the end game period to convey ownership of a junction. Make sure to look at the team scoring element rules that are outlined in the game manual part one when constructing the beacon. Teams will need to have both a red and a blue beacon to fully play the game. And more importantly, the beacon cannot resemble a game element. That means items such as cups will not be allowed as a legal beacon. Teams are also encouraged to use TensorFlow technology in the autonomous period. The signal used in autonomous is a tournament provided element that has three images that will be randomized. Teams earn points for navigating to the correct location based on the randomized image. Teams can gain more points if they create their own signal sleeve to place over the signal during pre-match setup and successfully navigate to the correct signal location during the autonomous. A template must be used to create the signal sleeve with images and the team number printed on the sleeve prior to arriving at the competition. The signal zone locations where the robots navigate to in the autonomous are not defined by a tape boundary. Therefore, there is no tape to assist in navigation or identifying inside and outside of these zones. Power play is a game of strategy, and teams should be prepared to work with their alliance partner to outline the best plan of action to score and ideally create their completed circuit. You should expect that the opposing alliance can and will score cones on top of your cones, which may break an already completed circuit. Teams also need to quickly strategize where to place their beacon during the end game to convey ownership of a junction. This way, your alliance now owns that junction and the opposing alliance cannot reclaim it from you. Remember, you only have two beacons total per match. I hope you enjoyed this overview of the power play game field in action. Good luck this season, teams.